Hey, what's up guys? Brian from Zombie Guitar. Here in this video, I am responding to a question that I received in an email from Neville. And Neville, I apologize if I'm saying your name wrong. We were going back and forth through emails. Anyway, uh, he picked up a copy of my book, Scales, Arpeggios, and Modes. And in that book, there is you know 60 or so pages that explains the basics of music theory as applied to the guitar fretboard. And then the second half of the book is, uh, you know, there's like 380 full fretboard diagrams. And the reason there's so many is because uh, I give you just the basic scales, which are the diatonic scale, the pentatonic scale, the blue scale, um, all the modes, and then scale combining fretboard diagrams. But I give it to you in every single key. So every single every single scale that you're looking at has one for every single key, which is why there's so many fretboard diagrams. But really, there's only, there's only a handful of scales that you really need to know. And his question was that he didn't understand how to read these fretboard diagrams because he's used to, um, you know, he's used to reading scales in tabbed version. So the C major scale, for example, he may see a tab for the C major scale and be able to walk up and down the scale in that manner. And then when he sees these full fretboard diagrams where I display the entire fretboard of the guitar with all these dots on it and stuff, he didn't know what to do. So this video is going to um, hopefully help him to understand that. Um, but also, I want to show you that you can cover the entire fretboard of the guitar with just three patterns. So if you can remember, if you can memorize three patterns, you can cover one full octave of the guitar, and then of course everything repeats itself once you get to the twelfth fret. So then the three patterns just start over again. All right. So if you can memorize three patterns, you can play in key up and down the entire neck of the guitar. Okay, so in this video, I'm going to show you uh, how to approach these three patterns for both a major key and a minor key. And of course, these same three patterns can be applied for any scale. Uh, scales are either major type of scales or minor types of scales, depending on whether it contains a major third or a minor third. That's a little bit beyond the scope of this video, but we're just going to look at just the basic major scale framework covering the entire fretboard and the basic minor scale framework covering the entire fretboard. All right. So what he was used to seeing is say you have the C major scale. He is used to seeing that written in a tab type of notation like this. So Okay, there's nothing wrong with that. That is the C major scale. I started on the note C. I then moved through seven notes until I got into the next C, and that was the C major scale. That was just in this one little position. There were some open strings involved or some notes on open strings, um, but you know it was just the C major scale in one position. The problem that I find with that is uh, a person that is new to playing guitar, if they learn that scale, they think, what's the point? What is the point of that scale? How does that actually apply to music? How am I going to learn how to solo like you know my favorite guitar players by playing that one scale which is exactly why i take the full fretboard approach to teaching scales so let me show you uh my approach using a full fretboard diagram for the key of c major all right so what you see here is a full fretboard diagram of the key of c major now as i already said the um the c major scale contains seven notes and by looking at this fretboard diagram this looks like a lot more than just seven notes but really that's all it is, okay? It's just the seven notes can be found in many different places. The notes of the C major scale are the notes C, D, E, F, G, A, and B. The red dot indicates the scale root. I always use a red dot to indicate the major scale root for a major scale. And then when I look at minor scales, I use a white dot to indicate the scale root. So the fact that there's a red dot is letting you know that this is a major scale fretboard diagram. And all of the other black dots are either going to be the note D, E, F, G, A, or B. All right, so all up and down the entire neck of the guitar are these seven notes in many different patterns and positions, but it's all part of this, the overall scalar framework, which is the key of C major. Let me show you the three patterns that uh, I use, which essentially covers the entire fretboard. So I have what I call the home box, and then I have the A string home box, and then I have the three note per string pattern. So there's many different ways to play these scales. There's many different three note per string patterns that you can use, but as you can see, the three patterns that I'm going to show you in a second, they all connect with one another. And the three note per string pattern is the only one of the three 
in which every single string contains exactly three notes. So let me show you how to find these. So first we locate the first pattern, which is called the home box. I call this the home box because it's pentatonic position number one. If you were looking at this from the perspective of the pentatonic scale, it would look like this. All right, so that that's why I refer to that as the home box. Um, but we're looking at the diatonic scale, so we have all of the notes and not just the pentatonic scale notes. So the way you locate a home box, or the way you locate the home box for a major scale, is you take your pinky and you find the scale root on the low E string. So the low E string, or the scale root for this particular example, is the note C, because this is the C major scale. So I want to take my pinky and I want to find the note C. So right here, eighth fret is the note C. So if I stay within this little pattern right here, and I go from red dot, and then I walk through black dots until I get to the next red dot, I just played one octave of the C major scale. So it's gonna sound like this. Okay, so that's seven notes that I played, red dot to red dot. Now if I wanted to go and play that through two octaves, I could do that as well. I could go like this. Of course, all of these other black dots are also part of this framework. All right, but I'm just confining myself right to this area, which I refer to as the home box. All right, so anytime you have a red dot and you want to move through six more black dots until you get to the next red dot, that is one octave of the C major scale. All right, so that's the first position. So the second position is um, the one that's connected to this, which I refer to as the three note per string pattern, because there's exactly three notes on every string within this pattern. So the way you find this pattern for a major, uh, for a major scale fretboard diagram is you take your first finger now, not your pinky, your first finger, and you locate the scale root on the low E string. So again, our scale root for this example is C. So I take my first finger, I put it right here, eighth fret, and I'm going to play this pattern now. Okay, notice it's the same thing. It's the same exact notes. I'm just playing it using uh, different fret and string combinations. It sounds exactly the same as what I just did here. All right, but now I'm putting my first finger on this scale root and I'm playing this new pattern. So that is the one octave version of that. If I wanted to move through two octaves, I would continue doing so like this. And then if I wanted to continue up onto the high E string, those are also notes that are part of this key scale. All right, so that's the second pattern. So right now, just playing between the home box pattern and this three note per string pattern, I've now covered area of the fretboard that spans from the fourth fret all the way up to the uh, 13th fret. Okay, so now the third and final pattern that I'm gonna show you is what I call the A string home box. Again, this is just a term that I kind of made up. It's how I think about it, but it's very similar to the home box except your root is now located on the A string instead of being located on the low E string. So to find the A string home box for a major scale, you take your pinky and you find the scale root. Scale root is C because this is a C major scale. So I take my pinky and I put it here on the 15th fret of the A string. And then that's how I locate this particular box. So going from red dot, playing through black notes until I get to the next red dot, that's one octave of the C major scale. All right, and then of course the other black dots are just continuing moving through this scale if I wanted to keep going. All right, but we're just looking at this one little box pattern for now. So 
right there, I'm going from the, the home box and the three note per string pattern and then this A string home box. You're moving all the way from the fourth fret all the way up to the uh, 15th fret. And then once you want to continue moving up the fretboard further, then you're back at the home box again. Okay, the first pattern that I showed you, only you're an octave higher, you're in the higher area of the guitar. Here would be your note C up here. And then here's your home box. All right, so you can see you have one pattern, which I call the home box. You have your second pattern, which I call the three note per string pattern. And then you have this third pattern, which is the A string home box. And then the cycle just repeats itself. But that's all you really need. You just need those three patterns. So when he was used to playing in this open position down here, okay, so he's used to playing this. <laughs> He's used to playing that. Um, it's a, the exact same thing as what I played up here, which is what I called the A string home box. Um, the only difference is instead of playing this C up here, which is on the 15th fret of the A string, I just played this string, this C here, which is the third fret of the A string. All right, it's still the A string home box, but you're now including some open strings because open strings are part of, you know, are some notes that are part of this overall scalar framework. Okay, so this. It's the same exact thing, it's just one octave apart. All right, so some questions that I hear about this is, do you have to use the exact same fingers that I'm using? No, not necessarily. There's some guitar players that are phenomenal players, but they don't even use their pinky at all. The only reason I'm saying to use your pinky is just a simple way to locate the box. Once you can locate these box patterns, um, then you can kind of, you know which notes to play, you know which notes are part of the scale, which notes are part of the scalar framework, but you don't have to use the exact fingers. It just happens that this home box area spans a range of four frets for the most part, with the exception of the one note that's on the B string that falls back one fret. But, you know, you take your pinky, you find your scale root, boom, you know where you're at. Same thing for the A string home box. You take your pinky, you find your scale root on the A string, four fret range, you know where you're at. Um, and then when you want to find that three note per string pattern, you take your first finger, you find your scale root on the uh, low E string, and that just gives you your, you know, your location of where this pattern is. So you do have to use your pinky or first finger, not necessarily. I'm just showing you how to locate these patterns, all right? So that's for the major scale. So I just have a, uh, a looped chord progression stored here, and I'm just gonna show you why you may wanna learn these scales. Like, what's the point? The point is that when you play over a backing track that is in the key of whatever scale you're looking at, in this case, we're in the key of C major, all of the notes that you play are gonna sound good. So let me just go ahead and play this looped chord progression, and I'm just gonna kinda walk up and down the patterns, and you're gonna see that everything more or less works. So there was just a quick demo of I was, you know, just noodling around up and down the scale. I wasn't playing anything crazy or anything, just 
playing all the notes that are part of the C major scale, just to show you that all of the notes work over that particular chord progression because that chord progression was in the key of C major. And I was just using the same three patterns I showed you. I played right here in the home box. I played in that little three note per string pattern that I showed you. And then I played in the A string home box. Again, these are just terms that I made up. It helps me to remember which, which is which in my own mind. And then I moved up here to the home box again. All right, and sometimes I wasn't using my pinky. As I said, you don't have to use your pinky. I just say to use your pinky just to kind of give you, you know, a reference area. Pinky is major for the home box. First finger is minor for the home box, which we're gonna to get to next. But once I get up to here, I can't really, it's not comfortable for me to use my pinky on the note C. So I use my third finger instead. But you know, this, I just want you to know how to locate these box patterns, all right? And then I jump down here and then I played in this open position, which as I said, it's the exact same thing as this A string home box up here, except now there's just open strings involved. All right, so hopefully that made sense. Hopefully that showed you how you can play in key all up and down the entire neck of the guitar and everything is going to work so long as the progression that you're soloing over is in the same key. All right, so now we're gonna do the same thing, except we're now gonna do it for a minor scale. All right, so the thing to understand about major scales and minor scales is they are the exact same thing. Uh, it's just the diatonic scale. It's called the diatonic scale. You can either play the diatonic scale from the minor perspective or the diatonic scale from the major perspective. The only difference is which note you are dictating to be your tonal center. All right, so for every major scale, there is a what is known as the relative minor of that scale and vice versa. For every natural minor scale, there is a relative major scale. So we just looked at the, um, the C major scale. The relative minor of C major is A minor. All right, so I have other videos about that. I'll put, uh, post links to them below if you want to learn a little bit more about that concept. But just keep in mind that there's always a, a major minor pair for every single scale. So there's 12 possible major scales, and likewise there's 12 possible minor scales with each, each one of the 12 being a major minor pair. So C major and A minor are a relative major minor pair. So let's look at this fretboard diagram and see how we would locate these three box patterns for a minor scale. So what you see here is the A natural minor scale spanned across the entire fretboard. And if you didn't know what you were doing, then you would, you know, this could be very confusing, obviously. But again, we're just going to kind of approach this in this whole three pattern idea. So we're going to find our home box. We're going to find our three note per string pattern. And then we're going to find our A string home box. So um, let's first locate our home box. So for a minor key, you find your home box by taking your first finger, not your pinky. Major key is pinky. Minor key is first finger for the location of the home box. And you locate your scale root on the low E string. So the scale root for this is the note A, because this is the key of A minor now. So you find your note A with your first finger right here, fifth fret of the low E string. And this is how you locate your home box. If you're just looking at this from the minor pentatonic perspective, this would be your A minor pentatonic scale. <laughs> but we're looking at this in the uh, perspective of the full diatonic scale, the full seven note scale. And therefore you're gonna have some extra notes other than just the pentatonic notes. And that's gonna look and sound like this. All right, so that's the A minor scale in just one octave. Let's play this now through two octaves. So that's your A minor scale in the home box, or just this first of the three patterns right there. Now, if we wanted to move up and we wanted to find this three note per string pattern for a minor key, um, you're now gonna use your pinky and you're gonna find your scale root on the A string. Okay, so you wanna use your pinky to find the scale root on the A string when you're trying to find this three note per string pattern for a minor key. Hopefully that wasn't too confusing. So our scale root is A. We're trying to find the three note per string pattern. So we use our pinky to find the note A on the A string. So that would be right here, 12th fret, that's your note A. So that's how you locate this three note per string pattern. So. All 
right? So that's right in there is your A minor scale. But of course, all these other surrounding notes that are part of this pattern are also part of the A minor scale. <laughs> So we located this particular pattern with our with our pinky. All right. So that's the second of the three patterns. The third one is the A string home box, and you find your A string home box by taking your first finger because it's a minor key, and you locate the scale root on the A string. So first finger finds the note A on the A string. That would be right here, the twelfth fret, and then you play this pattern like so. So that's one octave. You can play all the other surrounding notes. And then if I wanted to complete that and land on the next A, I would have to slide out of this position a bit. All right. Okay, so that's the A string home box for this particular key, which is the key of A minor. And then, of course, everything repeats itself. Once you get back up past the A string home box, you're then at the home box again, or pattern number one. All right, and of course, you find your home box for a minor key by taking your first finger, finding the scale root on the low E string which is right here, 17th fret, that's note A. That's how I located that. And then if I wanted to come down here and play in the open position, I'm not going to be able to put my first finger on the scale root because the scale root is, is an open string in this case, but it's still the exact same thing as what I just played up here. It's just an octave lower. So instead of the 12th fret being my, um, my scale root, the open string which is also the A string, which is also the note A, is my scale root, so. All right, so again, I'm just gonna kinda do a quick demo. I just have a looped chord progression. It's the same exact progression as before, but instead of doing a C major chord to a G major chord to an F major chord, I'm now doing a minor chord to a G major chord to an F major chord and that's giving it the minor sound. This is a chord progression in the key of A minor. So basically I just did the same thing there. I just ran through each of these patterns. Pattern number one, which I call the home box. Pattern number two, which I call the three note per string pattern. And then pattern number three, which I call the A string home box. And then back up to pattern number one again, which I call the home box. And then I jump down here to the open position, which is the A string home box. Okay, so it's just those three patterns, you know, and I keep repeating in that same order and it's just how you locate them. So for a minor key, you locate your home your home box and your A string home box by using your first finger. 
and then you locate that three note per string pattern by using your pinky and finding the scale root on the A string. So it's slightly differently in the way that you locate these three patterns, but the three patterns are still the same three patterns regardless. So I purposely wanted to choose a major minor pair, a relative major minor pair, because not only did I want you to understand that you can cover the entire fretboard in just three patterns, but I also wanted you to understand that, um, you know, the way that you go about locating these patterns is different if you're viewing it from the minor perspective or from the major perspective. So there's just one more thing I wanted to point out before I finish up this lesson, and that is every once in a while, someone will say that these fretboard diagrams that I display on the screen are backwards and upside down and they don't make sense. And that is because these fretboard diagrams that I put on the screen are not meant to mimic the direction of my guitar fretboard. They're meant to mimic the direction of your guitar fretboard. So when you view these fretboard diagrams on the screen, the lowest, um, the lowest line on the screen is going to indicate your low E string. The highest line on the screen is going to uh, indicate the high E string. This is the same way that tabs are read. When you read tabs, the lowest line of a tab is going to be the low E string. The highest line of a tab is going to be the high E string. Everything in between is your E, A, D, G, B, E. All right, so it's the same way that tabs are laid out. And then when you look at the screen, reading from left to right, it goes low notes to high notes just the way that your fretboard is. So the orientation of these dots of the fretboard are exactly the same as an actual guitar fretboard. So this is what it's gonna look like. So when I hold my guitar like this, the lowest string is towards the ground and the high, highest pitch string, the high E string is toward the ceiling. And then looking to your left, that is where the lowest notes on the fretboard are. Looking to your right, that's where the highest notes of the fretboard are. So these fretboard diagrams are an exact representation of the guitar fretboard when viewed from this manner. So that's gonna do it for this lesson. Hopefully that was helpful. If there's any questions or comments, feel free to ask. I can uh, do a follow-up video if necessary. Thanks a lot.